In this video, we're going to take a look at one of Excel's financial functions, the future value function. Future value is used to determine how much money you will have uh, in an account at the end of a given period of time. And it makes uh, two assumptions. One is that the interest rate that you earn is constant over that period of time. And the other one is that if you make uh, payments, that you make the same um, payment amount over every uh, compounding period. And um, if you uh, follow those two restrictions, then you can use the future value function to figure out how much money you'll have at some point in the future. And I've already set up a little template here. And um, these are the values that we're going to provide. Um, future value is what we're trying to compute, and I'm using the same template over and over again. So uh, every time one of these will be crossed out. And just to make it a little bit easier to see the answer, we're going to put the formula over here. Um, periods, I've got a formula there. We'll talk about that formula in a minute. The uh, rate per period, I've also got a formula there, and we'll talk about that formula in a minute as well. Uh, here is the sample problem. We have $20,000 in the bank. Uh, money that you have right now is the present value, so let's put $20,000 up there. And we plan to deposit an additional $100 at the beginning of each month. And uh, that would be our deposit amount, which is the, the payment, put 100 And um, interest is, uh, it doesn't actually say this here, but the assumption is that interest is compounded uh, once every period. And, and since we're um, making deposits every month, um, there will be 12 periods per year, 12 compounding periods. Uh, it's going to be 40 years. And the annual interest rate is 10%. And uh, now, the formulas that I've got down here, if I double click on this, uh, if you are putting money in the bank for 40 years and you're making 12 payments per year, uh, the total number of payment periods is going to be 40 times 12 or 480. So once I put these two numbers in, this number down here automatically gets computed correctly, which is something that I will need over here when I want to compute the future value. And the other thing is um, the rate per period. The important thing is not the annual interest rate in these computations, but the rate per compounding period. So if your um, interest is compounded 12 times a year, then your rate per period is going to be your annual rate divided by 12. So you always have to take the annual rate, which is B6 here, and divide it by the number of periods, which is normally 12, but it doesn't, uh, it's not always. And then the last thing is, uh, it does make a little bit of difference whether you are doing the compounding at the beginning of the period and making the deposits at the beginning of the period, or whether you're doing those at the end of the period. And uh, it says in here that we are going to uh, be putting them at the beginning of each month. And uh, Excel has a little code that it uses for this. Uh, one means beginning and zero means end. So we need to put a one in here. Okay. Now, now that we've identified uh, all of our data, and these two things that we've also computed here are crucial. Um, otherwise, we'll, if we don't use these numbers for the number of periods and the rate per period, uh, we're not going to get the right answer. So uh, it's important that you not only determine uh, the number of periods per year and the number of years and the annual rate, uh, but that you compute the number of periods and the rate per period. So once you've done those, then we can figure out how much money we're going to have by using the future value function. And uh, you can get at all of the functions on here by clicking on the formulas tab. And in the function library group, click on the green uh, financial book and click on the down arrow and you'll see a list of all of the functions alphabetically and we want FV which is future value and it comes up with a list of function arguments for us and uh, all we have to do is fill in the blank uh, always when this function arguments uh, dialog box comes up some of the arguments will be listed in bold and sometimes some of them will be listed in ordinary text and the ones that are listed in bold are always required. If they're not listed in bold, Excel will use some default value if we don't put it in. Uh, we are always going to put in all of the values, so we're not going to have to worry about that. Okay, now once to know what the rate is, and uh, always use cell references. Do not uh, put the numbers in. That way, if you want to recompute with different numbers, all you have to do is go in here and change. You don't have to change the, the function or the formula. 
So the rate, and down here it says it's the interest rate per period. So example, you have to divide by 4 if you're doing quarterly payments. You have to divide by 12 if you're doing annual payments. So here is our rate per period, and it will put the value over here for you as you fill them in. The number of periods is right here. And notice I've, I've identified these in parentheses here with the names that are used by Excel as well. Uh, the payment. Uh, the payment is this number right here, but there's one little catch, and that is that in uh, all these financial functions, the payment is always considered negative, and um, that considers, uh, represents the direction that the money is flowing. So an easy way to remember it is if you take money out of your pocket and put it in the bank, the money is going away from you. Money that's going away from you has a negative sign. So you must always put a negative sign in front of it. And when you're doing a savings problem, uh, the present value is can be thought of as the sum of a bunch of payments that you have already made. And it's the sum of a bunch of payments that you've already made, then it is also a negative number. So um, if you add up a bunch of negative numbers, you get a negative number. And then we need to put in the type, and the type is this number down here. And uh, notice as you do this, uh, it will tell you what the result of the formula is down here. And click on OK and it will tell us that if we start with this, put this much in every month for 40 years, and this is our annual rate, uh, this is how much money we'll have at the end of that period. And the neat thing about uh, setting it up like this is we've just pretty much solved every future value problem that there is. If you want to make different assumptions about your interest rate or your beginning balance, so let's say you start out with zero, uh, let's say you deposit 250 every month, um, you save for, let's say, 45 years. Uh, your interest rate, though, is only 8%. Um, all you have to do is go up here and change these numbers and possibly this one down here. These two are always going to be calculated for you, and it automatically updates for you. You never have to go back and mess with the formula because when we did the formula in the first place, we did sell references. So use the future value function to determine how much money you will have at some point in the future if you make regular constant deposits at a constant interest rate.